What's up YouTube, in this video we're gonna go over how not to suck at turkey hunting. Let's get straight into this. Okay fellas, in this video we're gonna go over how not to be completely at turkey hunting. So, we're gonna be talking about some problems that you might be having, some mistakes that have happened before, and how we can solve them, of course. Now, is every turkey hunter's dream to, you know, get their hands on that voluptuous long beard? Mm. <laughs> and many have failed, because some of you fellas are doing these mistakes that are costing you that dream turkey, and you're just gonna be stuck with scrap shakes that are so dumb, they literally come to anything. We don't want those <laughs> jakes, we want those big, fat, juicy toms, so we can thump our chest to everybody and say, yeah, I got that. So our first topic that we're gonna go into is, of course, turkey nature. Some of you fellas, I'm talking to you guys, have gone in the field and not knowing what you're doing. It's completely fine, that happens to all of us. I, I went out to the field in my first year not knowing and I was fortunate enough to come away with a Jake. Lucky me, but, but besides that point, kill more turkeys, you have to learn how to think like a turkey. You gotta go into the mind of a turkey because those gobblers are out there 27 4, surviving, thriving, failing, and they are smart. They're smarter than people get more credit for. Not in the smart like they're gonna, you know, become a doctor. Like smart, like they'll make your life a living hell if you can't read them right. But that's what we're here for. So let's start with the beginning of the hunt. You're just crawling out there, you perch yourself against a heifer of a tree. You start to hear him gobble, and let's just say he's from 50 to 100 yards away. Let's just say you do your scouting in the evening, and you find the general direction. You're most likely just gonna be guessing what direction he's in and once in the morning when you crawl up there and perch yourself against a tree and it's too late to move then you're kind of stuck where you are unless you're a ballsy hunter and you're gonna you know creep up there to go find that heifer but that is a big risk move because this heifer is in a tree and he can overlay the whole entire scene that's happening he can see your dumb ass crawling through the brush like some degenerate and he's gonna blow your hunt but if you're a top class crawler and of course, you can slither up there without having that heifer see you. That's nice. But, but, but besides that, let's just say you're still perched up against your tree, about 50 to 100 yards from that turkey, and he starts gobbling, gobbling, gobbling. And this is where problem number one starts. A lot of hunters, I have noticed, just keep calling at that heifer and just keep calling at him. Now, this is obviously bad because you're just giving that gobbler notification. Hey, I'm a hen, I hear you, I'm gonna come to you. No, 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 no. See, as the hunter, we're trying to break their nature because in the wild, that gobbler is just gonna gobble, 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 and he's just gonna be attracting more hens. That's the whole point of this. That's why he gobbles, is to get those hens that hear him, can have those hens respond to him, and have them meet up so they can do some magic. Besides us talking about juiced up toms, we need to be talking about how we can get that juiced up tom to you. In order to do that, it's gonna take patience. You can't just be blaring out calls left and right just notifying that, that you're there because in nature the hen's supposed to go to the tom one way you can do this you can be patient enough and wait until he's on the floor now big toms are going to stay up on those trees longer jakes are going to be a lot more impatient they're going to be jumping the gun and they're going to be swooping down there trying to get those hens but that big tom is just going to be sitting up on that perch just overseeing the whole entire mess, looking at those hens. He's gonna wait until he's got himself a nice big old body of hens. And of course that is bad news for you because why the hell would a Tom come to your ass if he has a bunch of hens right in front of him? You're kind of screwed. So the best way I found to combat this is to one, wait until he's down the floor, then start calling at him. Now you want to be uh, kind of dialing back on the calling. I mean, read the turkey now, but dial back because you want him to be, you know, interested. You want him to be all juiced up to come to you. It has easier said than done, of course, and it's going to take a few tries, or a few hunts, I should say, to have a, you know, Tom to be all juiced up to come to you because that's against their nature. But if you have enough persistence, and of course you practice up on your calling, I think you have a better chance at getting yourself like, one of those Toms that you just hear in the woods come to you instead of just, you know. And a very quick tip, this is a small detail, a really small detail, but it has proven that it can work. And it has worked for me many a time. The one way to break those toms once they're on the floor is to just switch calls. What I mean by this, you can go from a mouth call to a different mouth call, go to a mouth call to a box call, to a sleigh call, to a push call, any call. Anything that makes a different sounding turkey, it's gonna make that tom think there's more than one hen in that area. And that's gonna be way more desirable, especially if he's a loner because, I don't know about you fellas, being alone is not fun. And of course, that tom wants to be with his 
ladies now. And of course, if he's all juiced up, he's especially gonna be one with the ladies. Next time you're in the woods, any time of the morning, I would do that. Once in a while, or if you think he's hung up, I would switch calls and make it sound like more than one hen and a different hen. That'll re-engage his interest, and of course, that'll make him want to come to you now. Our next mistake would be scouting. Now, this is not just scouting to see if there's turkeys in the area. I mean, this is scouting to know where they are during the time of the day. Because you do not want to be in the woods if they're in the field. And if you don't want to be in the field if they're in the woods. It is kind of common sense, fellas. But I see too many hunters just, you know, plop their ass in the field and call it a day. Even though the turkeys don't want to be in the field, they want to be in the woods. And they drift over to a different field, let's just say. Most turkey hunters, fellas, will just go, <laughs> This is close enough, I guess. <laughs> you do not want to do that. You want to be that hunter that goes the extra length and tries to perch his ass right in front of that tree where he is, or as close as that turkey is. Uh, it's not always possible to get as close to, the, let's just say, 50 or closer to the turkey because, you know, they're not dumb. They're going to be watching. So you want to be careful, of course, but you want to be as close to that turkey as possible, or at least you want to be in the war path of when they come through. And this is not guaranteed science. They may not come through that day in the field. They may not be gobbling that day. But if you're once step ahead of those turkeys and of course fellas you're not gonna be setting up yourself to lose because i'm just gonna say it, fellas we're all after the same goal we're after a big fat juicy long beard mm. all right fellas now we're gonna go into calling now calling is a bit of a hot topic because some hunters believe that you know you only should yelp three times at turkey that's it cut it off and don't ever talk to him again some other hunters believe you should just keep calling at the heifer until his ear drums blow out but what i like to believe is it goes for something more in the middle and of course you gotta read these turkeys because turkeys change by the day. They're not gonna like the same thing. Every turkey's gonna be different and you gotta adjust to that. So what I like to do, and before we go into this, any call will work, push button, mouth calls, slate calls, glass calls, anything will work. What I like to use and why I only brown most times is of course my trustworthy box call and my most definitely trusty mouth calls. Now, I bring a few mouth calls with me because they make different sounds and it can sound like a different hen. And it's like a quick access and of course when those, those turkeys are getting close, there's gonna be no movement because my, it's in my mouth. I can cover it pretty well and they won't see me move my hands. But now, with calling, this will make or break your hunt and you wanna be very sure that you can read the turkeys because if you wanna kill long beards consistently, not just lucky, consistently, you gotta read turkeys. There's no way around this. You have to learn how to read turkeys because if you can't read a turkey, I'm just gonna be honest, fellas. You're not gonna be killing turkeys often. I, it's, a, it's a hard truth. As a demonstration of what I like to do when we have a hung up gobbler, let's just say, I like to do this. And this is not a foolproof plan. This is what I like to do. Let's just say he's coming in. He's at about four yards, but he's hung up. He's not sure what the hell's going on. So slowly, and of course, without him seeing me, I switch the call to a different mouth call that makes a different sound. It doesn't have to be a mouth call, it can be a it can be a box call too, but any different sound that sounds like a different hen is gonna be re-engages interest like we were saying before. And the main thing about turkey calling is, I believe, of course, you wanna trick that Tom to thinking that that hen cannot hear him because that's gonna drive his ass crazy and that's what's gonna break his ass to come right to you where he can chew his ass off. But of course, that's easier said than done. So we're, our next topic is decoying. This could help or it can absolutely backfire on your ass. So our next topic, fellas, is of course, Decoin. Now, decoin is a, also another hot topic because some hunters believe that you don't need decoys, others say you do, but I like to, of course, go in the middle because decoys may or may not work. It all depends on the day or where that turkey's feeling, if he wants to kick some ass or he wants to, you know, get frisky. But besides that, it's time to get into the decoying. Now, fellas, I want you to ingrain in your minds the word may or may not work, because that is exactly what decoys are. They may or may not work. That's on some days. Some days, you'll have times just wanting to kick some ass. Other days, you're going to want to have times just, you know, back away. They don't want any of that smoke. But decoys can also encourage turkeys to charge them. This spread right here is supposed to piss off, you know, those times, because this is the juiced up heifer right here, and this is a hen that is also juiced up. And any self-respecting Tom is not gonna let that happen, of course. So he's gonna wanna kick his ass, and of course, clean the hen. And before that happens, you're gonna be shooting at him, hopefully. But in the early season, what I like to do is, you know, get rid of the hen and just have ourselves a fully stride out Jake. Not a Tom, but a Jake. Because Tom decoys, it'll attract the big heifer out of the woods, but you may be scaring off some other long beards that, you know, 
don't want to fight. So I would go with the uh, fully strout Jake in the in the for like first week of turkey hunting. Then after the first week, I'll dial it back, go from a Jake that's standing over a lay down hen. And after that period, or after that week, let's just say mid period, I'll most likely go with two. Hens. Now, you can run either two one things. You can just have yourself a lonely lay down hen or have yourself a feeder hen. Of course, you can put in an extra like standing attention hen, let's just say. But after the mid season, let's just say, I would just go with a lone hen. Just one lone hen. Now, this is not going to be as intimidating for those turkeys because, you know, they've been getting shot at, getting their asses kicked by other turkeys, and I don't think they don't really want to be messed around with anymore, so they're, they're going to be most likely leaving up hand up turkeys alone. They're going to be wanting to go for the stragglers, of course. I'm not saying that it's going to happen like that every time. You, you know, you're going to have some Tom, let's just say, last day of the turkey, so you want to kick some ass. But of course, I would say most likely after the midseason, they're going to be wanting to calm down a bit. And of course, this is the way to do it, but usually after this point, I'm just pulling away with all the decoys. Because this is the main problem with decoys. It's not that turkeys are scared. They're going to want to hold up because in nature, of course, it's never easy. And of course, the hens follow the toms or come to the toms, I should say. That's why they fan out in the field. It's to make the spectacle for the hens to come to him. And of course, the piss away some would-be challengers or kick some ass that day. It doesn't matter. It's just all to make a spectacle for the ladies. But the help you fellas out, I'm just going to lay out the entire season of how you should decoy, in my personal opinion. Now, early season, I would be putting out a fully fanned out jig, either alone or with a hen of some kind. Feeding, lay down, it doesn't matter. With a hen or just alone, a fanned out jig to make some sort of spectacle. For the mid-season, I'll go with a half strut jig standing over a lay down hen or with a feeding hen, either one. But I like to, I usually go with a lay down hen because that's gonna piss them off extra fast. And finally, for the late season, a lone hen standing up straight, feeding, or no hen at all. I like to go with no hen at all because you don't wanna give those, those turkeys a reason just to hold up and start strutting. You want them to come looking for you. But remember fellas, every day is different, every turkey is different, and they're gonna be reacting to things differently every single time. It's not gonna be the same cut as story every single time you go turkey hunting. It's gonna be a new, different issue. Remember that. And fellas, there's of course turkey reaping. Now turkey reaping, I've never tried before, but I'm trying out this year, of course, because before I was hunting on more public land and I wasn't suicidal to try that stuff. But now I have found my own spot, you know, a bit more private where I won't be shot by the other hunters. So hopefully we can get some success on that. But besides that, turkey reaping is a high risk, high reward type of game. Now it can work or it can absolutely blow up in your face. So in my opinion, it's more or less how risky you want to be that day. But the main way how you do it from what I've learned and seen, you want to get yourself a nice fanned out jig to hide behind, of course. And you want to be making yourself a spectacle, moving your fan around side to side, up, down, to try and piss off those toms. Because that movement is going to make them think that's a real turkey. But here's the problem. Your ass is behind it. If those toms move too fast in one direction, they're going to be seeing those legs of yours sticking out and it's going to blow your cover. And of course, if you wait too long and you, let's just say you're looking at Tom over here and there's a Tom right there you're not seeing, that Tom's going to kick your ass. So you have to be aware of your surroundings so one doesn't sneak up behind you and just, you know, start kicking the out of you. Now, fellas, if you're ballsy enough to try out turkey reaping, practice, harness your skills so you don't end up on the news or in the hospital because some turkey went to town on you. And our final topic for today, fellas, is of course turkey nature. Now, why we're going back at turkey nature, this, in my humble opinion, is why fellas do not kill as many turkeys as they should. They don't take the time to learn these heifers because it doesn't matter what kind of gun you have, what kind of camel you're wearing. It doesn't matter what kind of fancy calls you bought. If you cannot learn how to read turkeys, how to call at them, how to adjust to the situations, you're sorry guys, you're not going to be killing as many turkeys as you should be because I want you fellas to be going out there and getting long beards out of the woods, dragging them back home, and putting that delectable meat in your mouths. <laughs> now fellas, we're going to go through a scenario that happened to me personally while I was turkey hunting about two years ago when I was a strapping young buck. But if you like this video, of course, write I like turkey and down in the comment section. Now our story, how the re turkeys is about to start fellas. Now it starts when I was hunting with one of my buddies. And this was in the later season, of course. And the turkeys were, you know, becoming a bit smarter and they're not as dumb and juiced up as before. So it's, things are becoming harder and harder, of course. We have a Tom gobbling about, let's just say about 200 yards in the field 
field and he's just gobbling his head off and we're just calling we're just responding back to him every once in a while but he's not coming any closer so we're just we're assuming that he's all hend up so we change our calls as i've seen in the video before and we do a different sound a different sound that sounds like a different hen and all of a sudden about 80 yards closer to us and we're like this broke him but he's only halfway there pretty much so we gotta get him about 60 yards closer for a good shot at this heifer but we can't see him so we don't know how he's acting if he's all puffed out or is you know storming towards us so very quietly i do a little chirp and all of a sudden <laughs> About 50 yard, he's about 50 yards away from us, but now I can see a big glimpse of him and he's all fanned out. He's all dancing around the field and we're like, oh crap. In the heat of the moment, me and my friend go for a big gamble. Me and him start purring both at once. They sound like two different hens, you know, all juiced up too. And this works a little bit. He comes about 10 yards closer, but he's starting to inch closer by closer because he's all juiced up and he wants some of that action. But disaster strikes. As we predicted, he was hend up. And the hen comes screaming by about, let's just say, 30 yards away from us. She's about right and directly from us but she is oblivious to us and she's just pecking along feeding just doing all her hen stuff but this time he is all riled up and he wants to have more hens to his flock so he's doing his little dance 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 then he comes 20 yards in and back out so he's he's sort of zigzags near us so He's about 20 yards now behind a big thick bush. We cannot really see him behind the bush. We can just see a little bit of him, but not much. Not enough to shoot at him, so we just gotta be patient. So me and my friend do another bull thing. We start purring like crazy. Now, this could either scare him or this could really work and get him out in the open. But we're in desperation mode now because because this little interaction has gone on for a half hour now. And I think soon that hen's gonna be, you know, either one, catch us, two, lose interest and just walk away or bring that Tom with her, which it would be bad. So me and my buddy take a gamble. And this is what, fellas, you have to gamble to win at this game. Because remember, fellas, you're going against turkey nature. You're trying to trick him most of the time to come to you. Because in nature, the hens come to the Toms. As we were saying in the video, of course. And you fellas have to find the right juiced up time to come to you and break the laws of nature. For turkeys, of course. But that's the good thing about turkeys. They'll bend and break their rules sometimes. Cause you know, when they're all juiced up, they become dumb. But back to the story. So, me and my buddy start scratching the ground to sound like a hen scratching for grubs. And of course, we start purring again. And it works. The Tom comes out. He's now 10 yards. He's literally breathing on top of us. And tragically, we miss. As sad as that sounds, that's just the nature of the game. And this was a big heifer too. This was not some little dumb Jake. This was a king of the forest type of deal. And we just blew it. But moral of the story is, you have to learn how to read turkeys. You have to change up tactics to adjust to that turkey. And of course, you gotta take risks. Cause if you take no risks, I'm so sorry fellas to say, it's just not gonna work for you, man. You gotta take risks with these birds because if you want to get yourself a nice long beard and impress all the fellas you gotta take a risk thanks for watching if you guys want to see your last coyote hunt video down here and of course you fellas want to see us fish for some pond monsters video down here but besides that i'll see y'all next video see ya